Hi everyone, welcome to my green closet. So I was away all summer from social media and that's because we bought a 1950s house, which we have been renovating. So I will be sharing more about our home renovations, both from a sustainability perspective and also just design wise what I did. However, there are still a lot of little things to finish up. We also did an energy evaluation and applied for a greener homes grant, which gives us some money back for certain things. So I'll also be creating a separate video or blog post all about that process for anyone interested. But when you do the energy evaluation, they test your house and give you a before score. Ours was pretty bad. And they also give you a bunch of recommendations to improve. Many are things that anyone can do to save energy in your home. So I wanted to share some of the easier DIY things you can do to both save energy and also save money on your heating and cooling bills without doing a major renovation. So first is to cock your baseboards on external walls. Our energy test showed a lot of outside air leaking in by the baseboards. And this is very common because where the floor connects to the external walls is typically an area of the house that isn't well insulated. So the idea is to seal that up as best as you can. Now, the best way to do this is to take the baseboard off and caulk along the corner using a flexible caulk. They recommended we use silicone and then put the baseboards back on. Since we were already planning to replace our baseboards, that's what we did. However, if you're not able to remove your baseboards, you can still caulk along the top and bottom to help seal out air. But in that case, you will likely want to use a paintable caulk and be more careful as it will be visible. If you do this on all your external walls, it can help your air leakage and it also isn't a very time consuming or expensive project. I think we used about three or four tubes of silicone caulk for our whole unit and borrowed a caulk gun. Silicone is more expensive, but it only cost us around $35 to $40 to do this. So number two is to better seal your attic hatch. This is another area of the house that commonly leaks a lot of air. So our energy inspector told us an easy way to better seal your attic hatch is to line the edges with a weather seal strip or window seal. It looks like this. And then you likely need to add some extra weight to the panel because these are often just a piece of plywood so that it can effectively press down on the weather stripping and create a good seal. We just screwed some leftover two by four pieces onto the back of the hatch for extra weight. Again, this is another very easy project, takes next to no time, and you can get sealing strips for less than $10. Number three is to seal other cracks, gaps, and holes. So like I've already mentioned, sealing up your home is really important for energy efficiency. So inspect your walls inside and outside, especially around things like vents, windows, and doors. We had some surprisingly large gaps and holes in our house. Big holes can be filled with spray foam and smaller ones can be caulked. Both are things that you can get for 10 to $15 from a hardware store. So number four is to get a programmable thermostat. Get a thermostat where you can set schedules so that your temperature adjusts when you're at work and at night and you don't have to think about it. It's a huge waste of energy to keep your house at a consistent temperature when no one is home. Tons of thermostats now come with scheduling features. You can go with something like a smart thermostat if you want extra features. We decided to go with an Ecobee. I do like it, but I also don't think that you need a high-tech thermostat. But if you want one to save some money and be more sustainable, you can often find them second hand. That's how we got ours. Number five is to install better window coverings and treatments. A lot of energy is lost through windows because they're just less insulating than walls. And those plastic or metal horizontal and vertical blinds that many people have do very little to improve the energy lost. Currently cellular or honeycomb blinds are one of the best options for increasing R value because air gets trapped in the cells and helps insulate the windows. I also like these types of shades because you can get both blackout and light filtering styles. The light filtering is especially nice when you want to insulate the windows during the day but also not have a dark room. Thick thermal or blackout curtains can be another good insulating option, but you want to have them snug against the sides of the windows with as few air gaps as you can. 
And of course, you need to effectively use your window coverings. So closing them at night, if you're gone to work or out for other long periods of time during the day. And also when it's really hot in summer, window coverings can help a ton with keeping sunshine out and your house cool. Regarding costs and installation, it can vary a lot depending what you're going with. Curtains you can install yourself and they come at a wide variety of prices. But if you're going for insulation, usually you want to spend more to get thicker curtains. For honeycomb blinds, you can either get these custom fit to your windows or they do sell standard size ones at hardware stores that you can install yourself but for it to work effectively, you do want a good fit to your window. Our house was built in the 50s. Most of our windows are different sizes and crooked, so we went with getting cellular blinds custom fit. Just for a general price reference, obviously it depends on a lot of factors, but we're paying an average of 320 Canadian per blind to have them custom made and installed. It is definitely a more expensive home improvement compared to the others I've shared, but still relatively easy to do and of course cheaper than a large renovation and replacing all the windows. So those are some of the easier and more affordable updates we did to improve our home's energy efficiency and things that you might want to try as well. And also, if you have any other easy, energy efficient home improvements, please share them in the comments. Also, let me know if you have any specific questions about our home renovations. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.